involved with some external implements. To make sure that we're really prepared for that, we're just gonna take a couple of some joint openings as well as some full body like mobility strength flows to kind of supercharge the workout. And then we'll dive into some long working sets today. So more of like a strength endurance focus. So whether you're seated or standing or kneeling, just taking first a few lifts and drops of the chin with your fingertips open and reaching down and away from the shoulders. And as you allow the chin to drop down and lift up, trying to link it with a breath. Inhale as the chin lifts and exhale as the chin drops. Now, as you take this chin lift and chin drop, you can start to add in the arms and the spine. So the inhale becomes more of some spinal extension and the hands reach down and back. And on the exhale, it's rounding the spine slightly. Hands are gonna reach in front of you. Trying to go thumbs down. Each time trying to lengthen the breath just a tiny bit more. And also trying to reach a little bit further in each direction with the fingers and the tops of the head. Good. And the next time you end up in that rounded spine, so flex forward, reaching forward, just slowly round down towards the floor. And then we're going to slowly roll back up. So like you're dripping towards the ceiling. Letting the head and fingers be last. We're going to take that a couple more times. So rounding down, soften the knees, soften the breath. Rounding up. Once more. A little forward fold. This time after you fold forward, just move your body weight over towards the left. Roll up. Sink down, body towards the right. Dropping down to the left. And up on the left. Down to the right. And then up on the right. And of course, you can hold any of these longer if that's what you feel you need. I'm just going to take one more on each side. You could just bring it into a half kneeling. And whatever leg you choose to be down behind you, that same arm is going to be in motion. What we're going to do is take that hand, reach it across the body, stretching those fingertips wide, reach up to the ceiling, circle out and back behind you. At your pace, you're going to take five circles backwards, five circles forwards. The whole time you're thinking, how wide can you spread your fingers? How tall can you keep the top of the head? How firmly can you push your back chin down into the ground? When you reverse the direction of your circles, you're thinking how high can you lift your pinky finger while keeping the elbow nice and long before you circle your hand out and around. And how tall can you stay and be from the top of the head? And after you're set with number five on this side before, you switch legs. You just pop your hands down to the floor. And just take a few rocking forwards and backwards. As you sink back, letting the leg lengthen and your front toes lift. As you draw forward, taking the extended spine, lifting the chest so it's the tallest point. Your head is above your hips. And 
Take maybe one or two more rock forwards and backwards. A little flutter of the lips or a nice big sighing breath. Then we're gonna swap to the other leg in front, which means taking some circles with the other arm. So setting in that you have a nice strong foundation, hips are driving down, spine is lengthening up. Spread the fingers nice and wide, and we're gonna take those five long backward circles. How long can the elbow stay? And reaching across, up, then out and back behind you for a total of five in each direction. When it's time for you to reverse your circle, how long can you stay through the elbow? Lifting the pinky finger as high as you can before circling and rotating. Whenever you're set with five and five, bringing those hands down to the floor. And taking a few rocks forwards and backwards. As you sink backwards, your front toes lift, lengthening out the front leg. And rocking back forwards. And be mindful that each side is going to feel different. One side may feel looser, more comfortable. Um, or a bit more stiff than the other. Maybe both sides feel just about identical, but just taking a scan, taking some inventory of what you're feeling here. Take once more to each position. All we're gonna do is come into an all four shape. So from your all four shape, we're gonna just pop the knees off the ground so you lift up into bear position, and then you're just gonna float down into turtle. You can let your knees hover, you can let the knees tap. Cycling through turtle position, letting the knees tap or floating in an active hold, and then pressing the hips high towards the ceiling, letting the ears hang the leap between the elbows, letting the backs of the knees press behind you. Focusing on very active fingertips, so your fingertips are digging into the floor, or squeezing into the floor. And your toes are quite active, so in your turtle position, helping support you. And in your bear position, helping drive your heels towards the floor. Still taking your long breaths. The next time you go up to bear position, is taking your left leg, bringing it off the floor. So you're bringing your left heel in towards your left butt cheek, reaching your left foot towards the ceiling. We're gonna take about 45 seconds all on this one side. So you're going from your left foot reaching to the ceiling in a three-point bear pose. Shift forward into a mountain climber where your left knee just taps the back of your elbow and then send it back on up into that same three-point bear pose. Long breaths in and long breaths out. Can you reach the bottom of your left foot towards the ceiling with a pointed heel or a pointed toe and shifting forward like you're pinching a piece of paper between your elbow and your knee? And then the next time you end up in your bear position, can pop your other foot down to the floor. If you want to actively rest here, you can. If you'd like to take child's pose or just shake it out for a moment, please do so before we switch on over to the other side. As you get 
getting geared up. You can start from an all fours position, making sure you have a nice strong base of your hands. Wrists are stacked right over top. You're gonna press right on up into your toes, lifting into your bare position. And now you're gonna let your right leg fly, so reaching the right heel up and back towards the ceiling before you then shift forward. Elbow and knee are tight in this paused mountain climber looking position. And then repeat through taking a long breath in and a long breath out. You arrive in each of those positions. Big, full, long breaths being the focus here at this point in the warm-up, the preparation. Heck, it's still the workout. Then the next time you end up into bear position, same thing, you can take a child's pose. You can walk yourself into a forward fold. Anything you need to kind of rest and reset. And meet me on up in standing for a few moments. We're gonna take a, one or two movements from standing, one or two movements from the floor, and then we'll dive into the program for the day. So this one is a little combo. The first movement that's part of this is this side body bend. So at any time you can kind of break in two separate movements if the combination is melting your brain. But this is the upper body motion. A good check in is we're going to combine that with a lunge step. So as you step forwards, a good check in is whatever leg is in front, that hand is underneath. So as I step forward, my knee can hover. Your knee can also drop to the floor. And you're looking to create a lot of space down your whole side body, active fingertips. If you'd prefer, it can be a reverse lunge. So lunging backwards into this position. And having your knee tap the floor is just gonna give you a little more stability to focus on the length through the side body, the length through the shoulders, and staying stable in the hips. Let's take two more on each side. And really emphasizing those reach for these last two. And then finally, meet me on your back side on the floor. I'm gonna take the two notorious Dead bugs in combination with a just glute bridge. So for your dead bugs, setting up nice and strong. All right, just checking in that you're feeling the small of the low back in contact with the floor, not cemented down, but you're just feeling that there's not a noticeable space between your back body and the floor. And without using your arms, so the arms are gonna be here as a check in on your core or on the floor first, just moving one leg at a time with the bend in the knee. Having an exhale on each leg drop. While keeping your legs bent, you can start to add in the opposite arm. Leaving the leg bent, so right now a lot of the focus is just into your hip flexors, the connection of the core to the upper body, the strength and connection you're feeling to the floor. There's gonna be plenty of time to work at a higher intensity throughout the training session. So for now, just keeping it dialed back, 
slightly. Really getting primed strong. If you want to start lengthening out that leg, you can. Nice strong exhale during motion. Take once more on each side. Just popping the feet down. We're gonna lift up into one single glute bridge. And then just pick your right leg up off the ground. You can have your hands down. Hands up is gonna put a little more challenge into your core. We're just gonna be holding for 20 seconds. How much space can you keep between your back body and the floor, the foot driving down into the earth? Four, three, two, swap feet, keep the hips lifted for another 20 second hold. Five, four, three, and rest. All right. Take on any position you feel you may need. Snag a sip of water, agua, and as per usual, Sean's long warm up is now done. Um, the good news of today is everything is going to be running on a timer. So the only reason you would need to count your reps is to, we'll say, give yourself a reference point on how many or how much volume you should be doing during our time sets. Um, our first group is gonna be up here in green. So it's gonna be 60 seconds of moving, followed by 20 seconds of rest, so some sustained strength. We have a little flow. You can use a kettlebell, a dumbbell, anything, a weight plate, anything that provides a little bit of resistance that you can hold with both hands. I'll show that in a moment. We're then gonna have a Turkish get up to kneeling. So everything except the final standing portion, you can use again, dumbbell, kettlebell. If you wanted something with less weight, you can use a book, a shoe, something that's just gonna give feedback. 60 seconds on one side, 60 seconds on the other. And then we're going to have a plank row with a push-up combo. And the plank rows can be done and the push-ups can be done in a way where you can adjust the intensity. But the first move, the RDL to the curl slash clean, and then a squat. So you're going to be set up. You're going to take your straight leg deadlift. To get them up to your shoulders, it can be a curl. As time goes on, it might be a little more of a clean. Squat, bring them down. Soft knees deadlift into a curl, into a squat. And your Turkish get up to the kneeling. The point we're going to take it to, you have the option here. Remember, keeping this foot tucked underneath you so you can side hinge to stay low to the floor going all the way down to lying down, coming back up. And then your plank row with the push-up. You can take your plank rows from like a kneeling plank or from a quadruped position at any time, or from a full plank. After you do left and right, it's then a push-up. And same rule applies, it can be a push-up before you repeat, row, row, push-up, row, row, push up, and repeat. We're gonna take this for two rounds, straight through. So the timer here is gonna be rolling. Um, real quick, I know everyone's mics are kind of off, but if there isn't any questions, please shout them out. 
And then if not, make sure you have your piece of equipment handy and ready. And we're gonna get started in 10 seconds. And starting with that RDL, it's all mine up. Right off the bat, a big focus is can you have each of these breath centered? The RDL being breath centered. And the squat being breath centered and that's halfway so this is strength endurance not about speed but can you case stay consistent for the first 30 as you can for the second 30 Rest. It does not matter which side you Turkish get up with next, uh, whether you want to start with your left arm or your right arm. Again, we're going up to kneeling. We're going to be starting in just about five seconds. And here we go. Whatever implement you're holding, it's a strong fist. Keep reaching towards the ceiling, especially on your way back down to the ground. Rest. Right. Turn this timer up a little bit. Can't hear it back there. Okay, we got 12 seconds to rest. We're now taking get ups on the other side. All right, more important than how many is how strong can each get up look and feel. Oh, now that's the volume we're talking about. Exercise. Here. Trying to have your eyeballs fixed on something, looking at a specific point on your hand, looking at a spot on the ceiling, a spot on the kettlebell. Try to pick your eyes onto something, gives you more strength and stability. Rest. Rest. And now moving into your plank row with the push up. And any variation of the push up, any variation of the row. Find a rhythm. Exercise. Find a rhythm. If you think about it, it's also a minute of plank. So pace it out, even if that means you take a quick kneeling break at any time. Remember, this is the first set through, so you're getting warm, definitely feeling the resistance, but not moving outside of where you can control and sustain yet.
rest. Rest. Shake it on out. And we're going right back up to the top. So the RDL, the curl clean into a squat. <clears throat> Regulate your breathing here. As you can tell, that's gonna be the, the center. Exercise. You're in the RDL, can you reach the hips back, reach the head forwards during your squat, spread the floor, keep your head nice and tall. These movements are very different, so just keeping your focus on that. They should feel and look a bit different, but what stays consistent is strength between your neck and your waist. Nice and stacked spine, braced, front core, back core, side core, in core. Rest. Rest. Turkish get up in, either side, just to the kneeling spot. Three, two, Exercise. And you're reaching that fist towards the ceiling. Rest. Shake it out. Take a nice big flutter breath. Shake out the wrists and shoulders. Same jazz, other side. Exercise. Checking in with your windmill position, that kneeling where when your knee gets underneath you, you're able to feel your hips sink down towards your heel. How can you strengthen up your grip in your shoulder and relax the muscles in your face? Rest. Rest. Plank rows with the push up. And then we get a longer break before we dive into part two. So straight, stay strong for one more movement. Three, two, exercise. And adjust so you can feel strong 
imagining each time you row that there's a small glass of water on the back of your hips. You're trying to keep your hips still so you can avoid spilling any drops. And using that exhale to help support your pushing and your pulling. Rest. Rest for real. And we're in transition. Pause. Mucho nice. Mucho nice, everybody. Let me reset the time interval here. Okay. So, in this Join next us, portion. DIY yeah, 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 yeah. For all frontline heroes. And I'm more Thank you. So in this next portion, what we have are groups of two movements. The pink two is a group, the brown two is a group, the pink two is a group, and the brown two is a group. How this is gonna work is we have two movements, pretty much body weight. Some of them can involve now some external weight like the Cossack squat can be. Your goal is for that set number of times, so a minute and a half in the first group, a minute and a half in the second group, and then in the second or the final two groups will each be one minute per movement. The goal here is staying strong and consistent for the duration of time. So I'll just break them down one group at a time. Our first group is going to be a squat to a sprawl. A sprawl is different than a burpee because you're purposefully going into uh, spinal extension. So think like when we do uh, like a little back bend. Right, if you do like a downward dog into an up end, when we end here, your chest is pushing up and forwards, so your toes are active. This is the sprawl before you. And so it's drop into a squat, step back, purposely let the hips drop before you either step or hop back into your squat. If that's a no, a couple options you have also are squat, plank. You can choose that if you want. If not, just stay in plank for stepping back up. Or you can take is body weight squat, jump squat, and sustaining that for a minute and a half. After a minute and a half of that, we're going to break. Then it is a Cossack squat, either staying in the movement for a minute and a half. If you have something to grab onto, Something that's cool here is whatever side I'm sitting to, I'm gonna reach across and you switch hands every time you switch legs. So that is an option. If you don't wanna switch hands every time you switch legs, it's a coordination thing. Hold on to it with both hands as you sink from side to side. This is the only group we're gonna do one time just because it's a little bit more rigorous and intense. Um, the other three groups we're each going to do twice. So it's a minute and a half of that sprawl. We're going to rest about 40 seconds. Then we're going to do a minute and a half of the Cossack squat with the arm switch, if that's something that fits your fancy. All right. So taking any last little sips of air you may need, getting into your floor space, your version of the squat and sprawl, we're going to start in. 15 seconds right after I adjust the timer. Perfect, I did. All right. Final big deep breath. And we are going in 10. Three, two, and go for it. Remember. Doesn't need to be super fast. Own the squat. Feel strong and supported during that sprawl. And 
each time you're standing is an opportunity to regain your breath. Strong and sustained here. Letting the mind wander just enough. And before you know it, rest. we're done. Breathe and rest. A longer time to rest here, as you see, we still have 35 seconds. All right, that Cossack squat. Keeping your feet planted, so between now and the timer starting, just map out how far you think that is. And you're gonna really focus on grounding through each, well, all 10 toes and the outside edges of your heel. So really getting good points of contact on the floor. And we're going in five, four, three, two. Exercise. making the hand switch don't let the kettlebell or your dumbbell or your weight pull you down to the floor you're looking to hold on to it keep the spine tall and strong not letting it pull you out of alignment and I challenge you to stay low where one leg is always bent Final few. Rest. Rest. Entirely. Workout pause. Into the next group. This one and the next, oh, the next three, this one and the final two. We're each gonna take for two times through this next group is still gonna be a minute and a half per movement. And what it's gonna be is a sit out into a bridge. So think of the <clears throat> position, the Turkish get up where you lift your hips in combination with a low plank rotation. So from your sit out position, all you would do is after you kick through Instead of this being the end of the motion, after you kick through, hips lift, hands lift. Kick through, lift. The big check in here is even though it's a long amount of time, that means you can sit in between so you can regulate it out. Even if that means you tap your knees to the floor as you sit through. So even if the sit outs are not your best friend, there's the ways to adjust and avoid. <clears throat> and then with the plank rotation, you're staying low, so it's on your forearms, rotating from side to side. 
Remember, this is a minute and a half. If at any time you need to, it can be a kneeling plank rotation. But this one is twice through, so a minute and a half of the sit outs to the bridge, minute and a half of the plank rotations, minute and a half of the bridge, minute and a half of the plank rotations again. All right. We're gonna get started in about 15 to 20 seconds. So if you need a sip, snag one. All right. And we're gonna get going in five, I'll reset that. Five, four, three, two, and exercise. Hitting it. Got a big kick. A big hip lift to the ceiling. Keep on going. Just checking out everyone's form. Cool. Again, really exaggerate that reach up to the ceiling. You can even reach up and over the top of the body to get a little more extra length through the shoulder capsule. Slow, deep, long inhale mixed in. Refueling some of your oxygen, your energy. Rest. Checking in with how your heart rate feels by this time. Right, some of the movements we've done so far are strength focused. Some of the movements we've done are a little bit more plyometric. That combination is gonna deliver a little bit of a different response in the body by just being a hit session or just being a strength session. We're moving to those side planks in 12 seconds. Strengthen your forearms. Exercise. Remember, the wider your feet go, you give yourself a wider base of support. The more narrow your feet, the more challenging to avoid the rotation. There's no speed that you need to take. So there's no amount of rotations that you need to have. So if you prefer to find a tempo that you're stationary longer, that works. If you prefer staying in a more rhythmic moving, that also works. It's whatever you feel the strongest, where you can keep the most composure, the most Core engagement, and strong posture. How can you slow your breathing down? Rest. Rest. We're taking each of those one more time. So into the sit out with a bridge. And also into the low plank rotation. The wrists and shoulders need to shake or 
roll and give them that. Okay. 10 seconds. And finding a rhythm with those sit outs with the hip lift, whether your butt touches the floor or not. Exercise. Remember the arm that's on the floor is a pillar, so it's really pushing down into the ground, keeping space between the neck and your shoulder. And when your hips lift, really reach the belly button to the ceiling. So good hip extension at the top. Check back in with your breathing, with your pace, with your rhythm. We're on the back end. Rest. Rest. Fantastic job. And we got plank rotations coming up in the next 30-ish seconds. Again, whatever rhythm fits for you, whether you're spending more time on one side or you're in a smooth and consistent uh, tempo of switching sides. We're going, what, 10 seconds? 10 seconds till we kick it off. No glasses on this morning. All right. Big long inhale. Exercise. Here we go. When you make the switch, you're pushing your palm and your elbow down into the floor. How can you relax your face so more of that strength goes into your core and your shoulders? Almost there. Rest. Rest. Rest, rest, rest. Okay. So, good news is, done with both of those. Even better news, we're not done yet. How wonderful is that? So this portion is <clears throat> one minute per movement. Bring back up. We're in the third group here. Oh, pause that. One minute per movement. And since each of these movements have two sides. It's only going to be 30 seconds per side. 
before we switch. Okay, so 30 seconds on the left, 30 seconds on the right, change exercises, 30 seconds on the left, 30 seconds on the right. Our first movement is a chest press while holding a dead bug. So setting up with whatever pressing implement you have, if you have a band only, I will show you that in just a moment. But you can set up for having your legs here. You can play around with your opposite leg being further away. You can play around with both legs being further away. So level one, level two, level three, as long as you're remaining braced as you press. And you're not married to a position. So say if you stay here and you want to switch, you can. 30 seconds of pressing one side, 30 seconds of pressing on the other. The second move is a little more plyometric. So from standing, you're going to quickly switch from a high lunge position. So whatever leg starts in front is your anchor and it's a quick. After 30 seconds, you just switch the leg that's in front. So it's sink, quick tap. 30 seconds on the left, 30 seconds on the right. This is one that we're also gonna take two times through. So if you wanna feel it out, experiment with any of those exercises quick, you can. And what I'm gonna do is the timer is going to ding after 30 seconds. So you get a reminder of when to switch sides rather than just at the end. Okay. And we're gonna get going in 10. Well, tell me 10. Okay, 15, I got another advertisement. Side note, look for a new timer app that doesn't have advertisements. All right, we're going to 10. You're dead bug with the chest press first. Remember, it'll tell you when to switch sides. Exercise. Breathing out just before you start your chest press and keep breathing out during the entire duration of the press. It's like hitting the gas pedal while you're trying to drive up a hill. It's very important to breathe strong. Rest. Switch sides, a quick little shake out. And the other side, go for it. Exercise. Hopping on up, and this is a fast moving switch lunge. So whatever foot starts in front, sink a little bit. Exercise. And it's a quick toe tap switch. And let your arms be driving in motion, right? You have your sprinter arms ready. Rest, you gotta do the other side, a little shake out. And your sprinter arms, each step is explosive. How can you keep your head the tallest point? Rest. Down to the floor for dead bugs. It's gonna be a very different dead bug this time around after that little plyo spike. Exercise. Lock your breathing in. Maybe you change up your variation. Shh. 
Make your breath up, press up with your breaths. And prep for the other side. Exercise. And whichever variation may be, both legs together for level one. The opposite leg kicked away for level two. Both legs straight for level three. And it's not the level that makes the workout more or less effective. It is your intention your focus to stay strong in the right areas and supple in the others. Rest. Popping it up. Those quick lunge steps one more time. Exercise. And how can you be light like your foot switch is barely tapping the ground? Big sprinter arms. Rest. rest and shake it. One more time on the other side before we rest. Once again. Exercise. Let the breath get a little crazy. Hold this plyometric. Rest. Rest. Legs on fire. Okay. In this third group, or excuse me, in the fourth group, we have each move, one minute, two times. Luckily, they're a bit slower now. What we have is an overhead hold in combination with a long lever glute bridge. So, overhead hold, a plate, one dumbbell, two dumbbells, whatever it may be, locking in and owning that overhead position. And then what it's going to be is also a long bridge hold, which is from your glute bridge position, walking those feet a little bit out. So you're in like a reverse plank, holding here, driving the back of the head down, driving the elbows down. You can play around with having your legs totally straight, a little bit bent, a lot of it bent, we're doing each one for one full minute. So one full minute of holding the bridge, one full minute of the overhead hold. These are now stationary. Although they're still working and active, use them as a way to slow down your breathing, slow down your heart rate while still moving, okay? So picking up your thing to overhead hold, we are gonna be going in 10 seconds. And at any time, if you need to, you can bring it into a front rack or like a front squat hold position. Exercise. Right, this is all about, can you slow down your breathing? Let your eyes gaze off, stare at something, and then check in that you're strong in the feet, strong but soft in the knees. Strong in the core, relaxed in the neck, relaxed in the face so you can put that strength into your shoulders, into your hands. Got 20 seconds. All right, anytime if you need to, the front rack position is available. Check in that you're not arching your back like this, trying to pull and stack your spine right over your hips, stack your ribs 
right over your belly button. Rest. Rest. Set up for that glute bridge. Long levered glute bridge. And Exercise. here we go. Heels are down, hips are up. Again, pressing the backs of the elbows and the back of the head to the floor. Right, activating the upper spine, the cervical spine. Right, our neck is very good at tucking and looking down at our phone, at our laptop, at our feet. Really pressing the back of the head into the floor as if you're gonna look over your forehead. So activating the upper spine to stabilize. You can play around with how straight or how bent your feet are right now excuse me, how bent or how straight your knees are right now. Slow, deep breaths in, long breaths out. Rest. Rest, bring it back on up for another overhead hold. If you didn't love the way that felt, what you can do is a single arm overhead hold for 30 seconds and the other arm for 30 seconds. Exercise. Like personally, that overhead with both hands didn't feel super awesome for my lower body or my lower spine. I wasn't able to stay perfectly stacked, so I'm gonna do 30 seconds of a front rack with an overhead. So there's ways that you could adjust it right on the fly, bases on what you're feeling, right? It doesn't make it better or worse. If anything, it makes it better because you're listening to what your body's saying. And that's halfway. Checking in with the strength between your feet and your knees, strong toes, strong calves. Belly button is pulling back towards the spine. moments. Rest. Rest. And setting up that long bridge, that backwards plank position once again. Exercise. And how much emphasis can you dig your heels into the ground, press the back of the head into the ground. Rest. Rest. Hope you got a little zen out there on that last bridge hold, but just like that. Don't worry about this. Workout pause. That's all she wrote. So at this time, it's really just all about cooling down. So giving yourself a nice big scan. If there's anything off the bat you're feeling you needing, you're all super intelligent and body aware. Take that position. Um, if you want a little guidance, can hang around for just a moment. I have a private session with Philomena in just a moment, but a couple moves that would be very beautiful after something like that are anything from a shin box position. So setting up into this 90 degrees, these 90 degrees, right, and getting the chest over the knee. First focusing on sitting up nice and tall. And then if you need to, you can even round and fold out over front thigh or the front knee. So staying here for about a minute of focused breathing on each side. 
something else from your front line position, right? Letting one foot bend and reach towards the opposite hand. Or just laying flat and still with one foot up. Those in combination with any moves that you all love and know, I think would be extra stupendously, fantastically tabular. <laughs> 